Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, a developer advocate with Google, and this is the ML on Android with MediaPipe series, where you will be introduced to a variety of machine learning concepts and their application on Android with the MediaPipe framework. In this video, you're going to learn some high-level concepts behind machine learning with natural language processing, or in normal terms, working with text, along with how to implement those concepts in your Android apps with MediaPipe tasks. In particular, this video will focus on text classification and text similarity. While there's a few different, somewhat complex ways machine learning can work with text for classification, a simple version of what happens is that words and letters are represented by numbers through a process called tokenization. Then those tokens are processed to associate them with the likelihood of whatever is trying to be classified. This could be organizing documents based on their topic, classifying spam, or determining if a movie review is positive or negative. Honestly, going into detail about text classification could take an entire video series in and of itself. So fortunately, we've already put one together. You can find the link to the Natural Language Processing Zero to Hero series playlist down in this video's description. That said, we're in luck when it comes to applying text classification on Android, as it's fairly straightforward. First, you will need to import the MediaPipe Tasks text dependency. Then you can create your text classifier object, which is done in a very similar way to vision or audio tasks. For this example, you can use an off-the-shelf model called MobileBert to classify text sentiment as positive or negative. Once your text classifier is created, you only need to call the classify function on it with the text that you want to classify to get your results. Here you can see our example again, where you can type in a sentence on Android, click on the classify button, and then get the model's confidence for the text being positive or negative. Kind of deceptively easy, right? Where I personally think things get more interesting is when you want to find out how similar two blocks of text are. This is called text embedding and is often used as a part of creating a text searcher, though we would love to hear any interesting use cases that you may have for this tool in the comments below. Text embedding involves tokenizing text and then processing each token into a single vector embedding per comparable text block. Once you have those vectors, you can use a technique called cosine similarities to take the cosine of the angle between those vectors to determine similarity. Let's take a look at a very simple version of this to maybe make it a bit more clear. Let's say you have the sentences, hello world and hey world. Each word in those sentences is turned into its own vector. Then each word in each sentence is added together to create a sentence vector. You can then find the angle between those two sentence vectors, which in this case should be about 40 degrees, and then take the cosine of that angle to get a value representing the similarity. While the value is 0.77 for this example, it can range anywhere from negative one to one, with one being the exact same sentence and negative one representing two sentences that are completely different. You can start using this in your Android apps in the same way as the other tasks by first creating your options and then the media pipe task object, which in this case is the text embedder. This example is also using a type of model trained specifically for text embedding. After you've created the text embedder, you can start using it. You will first need to turn each block of text into an embedding. And then you can call the cosine similarity function to compare them and get a returned value. And that's it. If you try this out in our text embedding sample app, you can see that you get a cosine similarity of 0.77. If we take the arc cosine of that, we get 0.7 radians, or about 40 degrees in between the vectors of hey world and hello world. Again, deceptively easy, but that's what makes MediaPipe task great for machine learning. You don't need to worry about every step happening in the background to perform a task, but you can get a ton done without a lot of code. I've included links in the description of this video to both of these open source MediaPipe sample apps, the TensorFlow forums where you can ask questions and talk to other ML developers, the Google Developers Discord server where you can find a MediaPipe channel for live conversations with our team, and the official MediaPipe documentation. Thanks all for watching and keep an eye out for even more ML on Android with MediaPipe videos.